All right, guys, so I knew this was going to happen if Kendrick did not issue a timely response that Drake would most definitely drop another record on his head, and that is exactly what Drake just did. Now, I'm not one for putting time constraints on diss records. Whenever Kendrick's ready to drop, then so be it. But the longer that he takes, the more records that we're going to get from Drake. Drake is bored. Like, he's, the guy's playing chess by himself. Now, in the push-ups record, Drake stated that he was going into this war just like 50 Cent, and that is exactly what we have been seeing. Just like 50, Drake is leveraging social media right now to clown Kendrick. He's literally trying to force the guy to, to just put out a record. And the reason why Drake is doing this is because he understands the power of public perception. It's very interesting to me to see just how quickly the masses can completely change what was once a very strong opinion. If you asked people three weeks ago if Drake had even a chance at going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Kendrick, they would have laughed you out the building. However, as Drake has continued to chip away at Kendrick, the masses are now starting to change their minds. I actually did a poll today. And it had like 40,000 votes and it was very close to like 50-50. And I know for sure if I had to run that poll a month ago, it would have been easily 80% in favor of Kendrick. Maybe even higher. So right off rip, Drake feeds into the AI narrative that people were running with when it came to the push-ups track. Even in my own comments, this was something that I've seen many people latch onto right up until the track hit streaming services. And look, I'll be honest, I'm a massive Kendrick Lamar fan. Like I have intimate knowledge of every piece of music he's ever done. I'm a fan fan. But the way I'm seeing some of the people act on that side, it's like it's nothing short of complete and utter fucking delusion at this point. Like, it is sad. Drake starts out the record by impersonating Tupac with an AI voice changer. Kendrick, we need ya, the West Coast savior. Ain't great in your name and some hip-hop history. If you deal with this viciously, you seem a little nervous about all the publicity. And keep in mind, it, like, it's extremely clear that this is Drake rapping. Like, I, I first listened, I knew right away. You could tell this is Drake. He just used a voice changer. In the opening line, Drake cleverly channels Tupac to deliver a motivational message to Kendrick. Over the years, many looked at Kendrick as the successor of Pac, some even referring to him as his offspring. Even Kendrick mentioned a dream that he once had where Tupac paid him a visit, imparting words of encouragement. And um, it's a real situation where I was asleep one night, man, and his, his blur, like, his silhou like a silhouette, and he basically said, keep doing what you're doing. Don't let my music die. So Kendrick clearly took this visit from Tupac very seriously, and Drake uses this to his advantage. People look at Kendrick as not just the West Coast savior, but often as the savior of hip-hop as a whole, and Drake is shooting bullets through that narrative. He continues on to claim that if Kendrick played his cards right, that he could engrave his name in hip-hop history, and as we all know, Tupac is well known for having one of the most vicious and scathing diss records ever, which was Hit Em Up. You claim to be a player, but I fucked your wife. However, it gets even deeper when we find out that word on the street was that Kendrick was planning a hit him up style record against Drake. I heard his energy is just going to be something that's hard for Drake to match. Yeah. They heard. said he's coming like on some pocket hit him up. So with this Tupac angle, he's really, really trying to get in his head now. Really fucking with him. In the last line, Drake alludes to how Kendrick seems a little nervous with all the publicity. Realistically speaking, this is the first time where Kendrick has had his back against the wall. We've never seen him go toe-to-toe -to -toe with another artist, especially someone as big as Drake, and it appears that he may have stage fright. This is quite literally the first time in Kendrick's career where he's found himself becoming the butt of many jokes. So Drake is pretty much saying, like, where are you when it's actually time to do this? Like, yeah, you did control. You had your moment. Yeah, you did like that. You had your moment. But now it's actually time. Like, where the fuck are you? Fuck this Canadian light skin doc. We need to know the baby West Coast victory, man. Call him a bitch for me. Drake then proceeds to predict some of the obvious angles that Kendrick might use, taking away potential ammo. Talk about him liking young girls. That's a kid for me. Heard it on the button podcast. It's gotta be true. 
Drake then makes mention to the ongoing viral rumors that he is involved with much younger women, which was a narrative seemingly promoted by the Joe Budden podcast. But really what Drake means with this is Kendrick is scrambling. Like, I'll call him a bitch. Uh, I'll call him light skin. What about the Joe Budden? That, that gotta be true. I'll, I'll use that. Like, he's saying, like, I know you have fucking nothing. I got a lot. They told me the spirit of my belly is alive. And the nigga under five foot five, so it's gotta be you. I would beat the whole fucking game. Drake uses Tupac to dish out another joke regarding Kendrick's height and makes it seem as if Pac is disappointed with Kendrick's approach to the beef. He perfectly does this by pointing out how Pac handled his beefs in the past. I would beef the whole fucking game. Essentially what Drake is doing here is he's downplaying any potential comparisons between Tupac and Kendrick. Drake is pretty much saying, look, you're not fucking Tupac. You never were Tupac. You never will be Tupac. You're not even this guy at all. Stop it. It was me and Snoop Dogg had my fucking shirt off in the house of blues. Can you gotta fuck this nigga, girl? He gotta get abused. Drake continues to blow holes in the Kendrick and Tupac comparisons by referencing Tupac's infamous performance at the house of blues. It was at this performance where Pac doubled down on the Biggie disrespect, screaming out how he slept with Biggie's wife. I ain't wanna fuck that fat bitch no way. Yes, but you know that's the secret to war. He my enemy, so she looked all right. Drake seemingly insinuates that without having this sort of angle to play and without having this sort of dirt in the tuck, he could never match the energy of Hit'em Up. Drake, on the other hand, does seem to have something nuclear on Kendrick, which he alluded to on the last record. This ain't even everything I know don't wait to demon up. This ain't even everything I know don't wait to demon up. And like, I'm only saying this shit because of the situation. Like, look at what we're seeing from Drake. He is begging this man to respond, mocking him with West Coast legends. He doesn't seem phased by Kendrick Lamar at all. In fact, he seems more confident than he's ever been in his entire career right now. All that shit about burning tattoos, he is not amused. That's jail talk for real thugs, you gotta be you. Gotta leave this motherfucker broken and bruised before we really lose. Drake then continues on by referencing Kendrick's line from Like That about burning tattoos. I'm snatching chains and burning tattoos, it's up. Drake begins to chip away at the aggressive boogeyman aura that Kendrick presented on Like That and claims that he needs to start being himself. You asked for the smoke, now I seen you too busy for the smoke, I won't lie, the people confused. Now you about to get this shit another week, and fall back to home, girl, but run the numbers up, I would have refused. For these industry relationships, she not in your shoes. You Drake uses Tupac again to symbolize the stark contrast between Pac and Kendrick. He then alludes to how Kendrick has the people confused, as over the years, even the most respected OGs, really put Kendrick on a pedestal. So when he did drop the, you know, control verse, to me, it's necessary. You know, he's feeling like he's feeling. One thing about the West Coast, we ain't never been friendly. So I don't know why y'all thought his nigga was gonna be friends with y'all because he had a backpack. He may have a motherfucking AK in that backpack. <laughs> Drake continues to detail what Pac's reaction would likely be to Kendrick's delay. So Drake got Pac saying like, this guy? They're like, this is the guy that you're saying is me? Like, that's a fucking insult. Do you guys remember what I did and who I was? Like, this is supposed to be the new Tupac? Nah. Drake hints that Kendrick felt pressured by the industry to delay his record release due to Taylor Swift's album drop this week. What's even more intriguing is Drake's choice to hold back his push-ups track until after Swift's release adding a layer of depth and pettiness to the situation. I mean, essentially, Drake is doing exactly what Tupac is telling Kendrick to do on this record. Like, Drake is pretty much saying, even I'm more like Tupac than this guy. You're supposed to be the boogeyman, go do what you do. Unless this is a moment that you tell us it's not really you. So, Drake is really driving this thing home as he questions Kendrick's boogeyman exterior. Drake is pretty much saying, like, Aren't you about that action? Like, I thought you were this rapidy rap hardcore hip-hop guy. Unless that's not really you. Drake then switches up West Coast icons and starts to speak through Snoop. Yes, you. What the fuck you really got to do? You passed you the torch at the House of Blues and now you got to do some dirty work. You know how to move, right? Right? 
Speaking through Snoop, Drake references the emotional moment for Kendrick when Snoop and several West Coast legends passed the torch to Kendrick at the House of Blues. Nigga, you got the torch, nigga. You better run with it. You better run with it, nigga, because it's yours. And I can almost guarantee that this is getting in Kendrick's head. Like, he's bringing them back to this moment where Snoop Dogg is like, yeah, here's the torch, but you got to do right by this. You know, this is a big fucking deal. Don't let us down. Drake then alludes to how Kendrick has to do some dirty work, mentioning that he knows how to move. Coming off my last video, again, I feel this is a reference to ongoing issues between Kendrick and his wife. It was only four months ago, Kendrick decided to purchase an $8.6 million penthouse in New York. You know how to move, right? Right? So pay attention to how he puts emphasis on this in particular. Like, you know how to move, right? Right? I know you've never been to jail or with jumpsuits and shower shoes. Never shot nobody, never stabbed nobody. Never did nothing violent and no one is the homies that empower you. Similar to the approach that Drake used through Tupac, he now drives this home through Snoop, mentioning how Kendrick has never been about that life and how it was the people that he surrounded himself with that were really from the streets. World is watching this chess game, but are you out of moves? That you know the DOG never fucking died of you. But right now, I seem like you posted up without a clue of what the fuck you about to do. So, more the same here. Drake continues to clown Kendrick for not responding in a more speedy manner. And he really says something that is pretty predictable of what Snoop might actually say. I mean, just think about how petty and disrespectful this is. Like, he's literally using West Coast legends to try to inspire this guy to just respond to him. Like, that's crazy. He then, in a funny way, segues into his own verse, making it seem like Snoop set him up for an alley-oop. Yeah, um, that's the truth. I'm definitely about to come around the land gang and let my fucking bow move. Shitting on you niggas from a whole different altitude. Drake continues to shit on Kendrick and his label PG Lang and states that he is far above their caliber. High up in the sky like I'm Howard Hughes. The first one really only took me an hour or two. The next one is really about to bring out the coward in you. In the first line, Drake compares himself to aviation business tycoon Howard Hughes, who was once the richest man in America. He then has one of the coldest lines on the track, stating that his push-ups diss only took him one or two hours to make. While fans seem to marvel at Drake's performance on that record, he makes it seem like it was light work and that his next one will be a full-on knockout. And this right here is exactly how Drake is winning people over. Like, you can't, you can't win a fight by saying nothing. The judge has got to have something to score. By Drake saying, yeah, that, that diss only took me two hours. Like, he's really trying to control the public's perception of Kendrick remaining quiet. Like, it doesn't look good for him. But now we gotta wait a fucking week, cause Taylor Swift is your new top. And if you about to drop, she gotta approve. This girl really about to make you act like you not in a feud. Similar to the lines on push-ups where Drake alludes to TDE extorting Kendrick in the past, Drake claims that Taylor Swift has now assumed that role. He then makes it seem as if he has some inside information that Kendrick is at the mercy of the industry's demands. You can't say that this is not calculated. Like, he is fucking playing chess here. Like, it's, it's funny to me because Drake is known as the industry guy, but by doing shit like this, he's basically showing people that he really doesn't give a fuck. Like, if I want to drop, I'm dropping. Like, he, he's making a statement with this. She tailor made your schedule with Ant, you out of the loop. Hate all you corporate industry puppets, I'm not in the mood. I love it when you niggas talk loose like I'm not in the room. Drake hints that Kendrick's manager, Anthony, has constructed a previous rollout with Taylor Swift and that Kendrick has zero say in the matter. He then makes it seem like he has someone within Kendrick's immediate circle that is sharing information with him. Since like that, your tone changed a little. You not as enthused. How are you not in the booth? It feel like you kind of removed. You trying to let this shit die down. Nah, nah, nah. Not this time, nigga. You following through. Drake makes a big statement here. Kendrick's control verse solidified his position at the time, casting Drake in somewhat of a negative light. At the end of the day, the control verse truly did help propel Kendrick's career and overshadow Drake in the public eye. However, Drake makes it clear that he will not allow history to repeat itself and suggests that Kendrick attempted to recreate the control moment with like that. 
So he's saying like, no, 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 not this time. You're not about to just get your little moment off and then go hide away. We're, we're doing war this time. I'm not letting this happen again. I guess you need another week to figure out how to improve. What the fuck is taking so long? We waiting on you. Again, Drake is begging Kendrick to respond, basically saying that he's trying to buy time. Like, how are you not in the booth, bro? You're supposed to be this legendary MC. Where are you? The rest of y'all are definitely involved. Y'all getting it too. Soon as you get the courage to drop, I'm out on the loose. On the loose. So right now, Drake is not overly concerned about the side missions as Kendrick is his main target. But he does make it clear that he has more in the bag for the others involved. And then he proceeds to do something that he never does completely out of character. He just talks at the end of the record over the instrumental. Yeah, shout out to Taylor Swift. Biggest gangster in the music game right now. You know, I moved my album when she dropped. I said that already. You know? I mean, I think it's funny as fuck. He's making, he's making Taylor Swift seem like she's Suge Knight. I, I know you in that NY apartment. You're struggling right now. I know it. In a notepad doing lyrical gymnastics, my boy. You so again, the question needs to be asked. Why did Kendrick purchase a property in New York just four months ago? Like I said, man, like Drake know something he he does better have a motherfucking quintuple entendre on that shit some shit i don't even understand like this shit better be crazy we waiting on you so this is really strategic and smart from drake especially given his previous mention of his last record only taking one or two hours drake is basically shaping public opinion before kendrick even drops his record kendrick is known for being an amazing lyricist so if it's taken this long the diss has to be monumental. It's smart because he's holding Kendrick to the standard that everyone else puts him at. Like this pedestal he's on. Like, this is where I want you to come in at. So regardless of what anyone says right now, Drake is clearly winning this war. Now, obviously, Kendrick hasn't responded, but Drake already seems two to three steps ahead. Ultimately, what Drake tried to prove here with this record is that the guy that has been deemed a boogeyman, the guy that has been passed the torch, the guy that gets compared to Pac, the guy that antagonizes beef, is not really that guy. Now, this is far from over, right? I mean, like, we all seen how quick they flipped on, on Kendrick. Uh, all it takes is for him to drop that one record, and then the sheep are going to herd <laughs> towards the noise, pretty much, right? Oh, we're going over here now. It's just how it is. We do need Kendrick to come with something, because I guarantee if he doesn't, Drake is going to drop another record again. He's going to keep rapping. So it is what it is. What's the dirt is so dope, bro. He kills it, right? His he Kendrick so and, fire. and Drake. Hold it, bro. That shit is so hard, dog. Run it back. And shout out to my dude, What's the Dirt, because I do like him. Mm -hmm. I do. Oh, yes, he's dope. What's the Dirt? Shout out to that person. Uh, the homie looked like he did, he did a good job. I saw that clip on YouTube. The guy did a good job. He did. He did a good job with that. That's crazy. This guy is the Nostradamus of rap. Fresh out the club, on my way back to the mansion. You know where I'm from, you don't never gotta ask us.